God it would help you. It. <laughs> Feels like Charizard just took a shit in my mouth. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey. He's a Pro Bowl tight end, and he also has a new show, Catching Kelsey. Yep. It's on E! It premieres October 5th. Travis, welcome to the show. It is, um, I don't necessarily know if it's a pleasure, but we will find out in a little bit. Do you know what you're getting yourself into here? I'm not a big spicy food guy, so. Uh, That's what I was gonna ask, because you play in Kansas City. That's a big barbecue city. Sometimes yeah. I imagine there's some hot sauce people there, but you're not one of them. I enjoy my barbecue, but uh, not so much the, uh, the hot sauce. Are you ready to get it going? Let's get this thing going. First one is sriracha. Sriracha's no big deal. Tell you what, I do love wings. These reality dating shows, I actually love them. I'm obsessed with them. They're my favorite types of shows. The one thing I've noticed is when you're on one of these shows and you're competing on one of these shows, you can go one of two routes. You can either just shine and be somebody that the person wants to date, or you can survive by burying other people, by stabbing them in the back. How do you differentiate somebody who's just looking out for you from somebody who's just a snitch? The girls will actually come out and tell you. They, they, they tell me there, well, I think she's, she needs to just get put on blast because I heard her saying in the background that you know she didn't even want to be here and that she was here for her image. You know, so girls start to get thrown under the bus and kind of buried, like you said. But at the same time, you know, it's um, it's all about the certain strategies. They've honestly become the evil sisters in Cinderella. The original Cin Cinderella, or like the the Whitney Houston. But you have to be careful too, because sometimes the person who's stabbing someone in the back, they're actually the person you need to be watching. You know what oh, yeah. I mean? They're trying to do a smoke and mirrors thing where they try to throw Kim under the bus, <laughs> but it's actually Kelly who's the problem. You know what I'm saying? Kelly. God damn it. There <laughs> you go. So in all these shows, there's always the face-to-face -face meeting where you guys meet for the first time, and they always kind of give that person the stage so that she can do something to kind of hook Travis in, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Do you have any advice for that first meeting? Because they seem to either go really well or brick really hard whenever I watch these we, shows. We actually have that in the show. I, I, my advice to them would just be calm the heart rate down, don't talk a mile a minute, and uh, do something funny. Do something funny that, uh, that uh, and something that somebody, the person in front of you can relate to. And keep it simple. Sometimes they get a lot of moving oh, yeah, parts going, yeah. and then that's when it's always a don't, disaster. Don't start talking about Kevin the cat. I can tell that they're getting hotter. That's how the show works. Yeah. What's the most obnoxious thing you bought after signing that $46 million contract extension? Obnoxious? Mm-hmm. You ever watched uh, Back to the Future? Yes. I'm a big sneaker guy. Okay, oh, you bought the mags. No, Marty McFly Air Mags. How and, much did um, that put you out? Uh, $7,500. Wow! But those things light up and take the attention of the room, every room I go into. Do you wear them or do you just put them up in like a display case or something? Um, they have their own display case when you buy them and it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. It's a pretty sweet box. But I, uh, I have worn them out. I wore them to uh, my first charity event. I wore them to my first uh, NFL Monday night football game. It was kind of like a coming out party for me. I ended up having a touchdown about 100 yards. It was my best best game at the time. It's one of those things where I wear the kicks just because I'm a sneakerhead. So I absolutely love going out and showing that, you know, why have the sneakers and not put them on your feet. I would just, I would just like to keep them up in the showcase. Mm. You got a little sweet and spicy there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right, is that the let it marinate? Let it marinate, let it marinate. You let wow! it marinate. I think a lot of college standouts, they dream of playing in big markets. They dream of playing in New York. They dream of playing in LA. But if you really think it through, a place like Kansas City is kind of the perfect place to play. In general, I bet the people are a little bit nicer. I bet you're recognized locally as kind of a hero. I'm sure the media scrutiny is just a drop in the bucket compared to what you'd go through in New York or something. The best thing about KC is they're, they're die hard diehard sports fans. Every single every single game at Arrowhead, it is rocking. Doesn't matter if, it, if it's at, sorry, my mouth's watering. <laughs> um, doesn't matter, oh, that deep, that deep inhale was not where I should have gone with that. <laughs> oh. 
Those are starting to run nice. <laughs> it's getting a little, this is, a little yeah. loosened up. Nice. This is that, was that was four. That was four. So, um, yeah, Arrowhead is uh, <laughs> is awesome. Even when I was a rookie and nobody knew about me, I was still getting recognized, which is crazy. Knowing that I'm I'm from Cleveland and I was a Midwest kid and how much I love sports growing up and that's a sports town. Um, it's uh, got a lot of similarities. And uh, especially with the Royals winning it last year and us finally hitting that win streak, uh, that town was rocking. Right. And there was uh, there's no place I'd rather be than, than Kansas City during the season, man. That is a that is a tangy, delicious hot sauce. That is very nice. Thank you, Travis. Way better than the ping is good. <laughs> fat kids screaming in your face. <laughs> so speaking of Kansas City and their sports fans, there's this group of famous Kansas City sports fans and Rob Riggle and Jason oh, Stakis yeah. and Paul Rudd, and they always seem to be on the scene. I have to think that you've come across these guys at some point or another. Is there a story that stands out to you? Every single year they come in and do a big time charity event for Kansas City uh, hospitals and a lot of the uh, the youth, and it's, um, it's awesome. It's called Big Slick. Just being around those guys, knowing that it's for a good cause, but you get to play in the K, the Royals uh, Stadium or the Royals Arena, and it's like Rob Riggle can't turn it off. I mean, he's just, he's Rob Riggle. And then what Paul is Rudd is absolutely hysterical. What do they talk to you about? They talk football. I've seen Paul Rudd in the in the office or in the in the locker room after games. For the Browns game, the Christmas game, he dressed up like Santa and uh, and did the tomahawk chop in the, in, in the beginning of the game, which was awesome. But those guys, uh, they, they love getting back to where they're from and, and showing their, showing their faces, man. Is that a bell pepper? Oh no, it's an orange scorpion pepper. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Huh. I could taste the, the orange there. God damn it. Which Cleveland sports failure are Cleveland locals My most just rise embarrassed like by? Degrees. Because there's been a lot. You have the Ernest Biner fumble, you have the decision, obviously, you have that Jordan shot over Elo. What do you think? As somebody who grew up in Cleveland, is the one Cleveland sports moment failure that the people in Cleveland are most ashamed <coughs> and embarrassed by? Uh, we're talking Cleveland sports now? Mm hmm. Which failure do you think that Cleveland locals oh, are most. <laughs> uh, are most embarrassed by? Ho Jose Mesa. Jose Mesa. No, I can't say that because I'm, I loved Jose Mesa going into that game, and he was a, he was a rock star for us. But and we forgive him now. Now that that Cleveland has won a championship. When uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers won the finals, did you celebrate? I cried. You did. You cried. I cried. I've been a Cavs fan since Danny Ferry was running the team. Well, not in the GM aspect, but actually on the floor. Exactly. It's been awesome to see you know going from those beautiful black and blue uniforms to the where they are now and having the highs and lows of picking LeBron and LeBron leaving and it's been like a movie. It really know? has. More it's dramatic like and crazier than a movie. And then the Believeland comes out right before they win the championship. And so coming back 3-1 in the championship. I mean, it's, you're, bring, you're about to bring me to tears. Either that or Pain 100 is going to bring me to tears next. Pain 100%. It is a Kansas City hot sauce. Mm -hmm. How you feeling at this point in the game? My mouth is on fire. I don't know if I'm even going to be able to taste this next one. That's a good thing. Until I can taste it <laughs> and it just raises it to another level. Oh god. Why? I don't know. It always puzzles me. But as long as famous people keep agreeing to do my show, we're gonna keep cycling them through. I'm just catching fire, inhaling smoke. <sighs> you can always sip the milk, you can always sip the water. There's no shame in that. I heard it was frowned upon. That's what you need to tell everybody who tries to take the milk. Man, the fuck up. Do you have any say in the scenarios for the dates? Or are you just as surprised by them as the ladies who are on them? <laughs> Ah, the dates, whoo, the dates, the dates, the dates were, uh... Did you know about them beforehand or were you surprised by them? Going into them, uh, I knew about them. Um, like I said, a lot of it's, god damn it, <laughs> a lot of it's um, what you would see in the off season of a guy trying to make money off the field and do make appearances. Oh wow. 
And um, you should have brought him to our show. Yeah, I know, right? Had these ladies go. It's called a this. press run. Travis, what the <laughs> fuck is this? How would you plan the perfect first date in your hometown of Cleveland? Is it the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and then the Christmas Story Museum, or are you going down a different road? I like I like where you're going with that. Two very very iconic. great iconic places to go in Cleveland. Um, Taking them to the pier is always a go-to. Um, I can't even think about Cleveland right now. Um, yeah, the take it, take it, take it to the pier. Let her see those beautiful waves coming in. You know, there's no surf like Cleveland. Um, Lake Erie's got it like that. <laughs> <laughs> best beaches in the uh, best beaches in the state. Sorry, am I sweating? Don't apologize for it, everybody does. Just be careful around your eyes. Oh God, thank you for that. You want us to slow down a little bit? No, dude, I'm quit. I love it. Just get this shit over with. Mmm. <laughs> oh so, God, that's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Why, why do I make it? Oh, so I know in every interview that you do, they probably try to like make you dance in every single one. I'm sure that they do that, and I know that you're a nice guy and you probably do it, and I bet it's reluctantly. So I'm not gonna ask you to dance, but I do have a dance question, because I saw you, you at this professional bull riding event, and you uh -huh. got in a dance-off yeah. with this guy, Skim Milk, Tennis. and you guys were competing for a belt buckle, and Skim Milk won, but anybody who watches that clip knows that fundamentally, you're a better dancer. Did you feel robbed? No. No, I didn't. I didn't feel robbed at all. I just left the most terrible taste I've ever had. I, don't, I can't barely even talk right now. I don't want to touch my lips. I don't want my lips to touch. Stay away, but I do have to respect. I've gone for milk a couple times. That is... It, oh, it would help you. It. I'm getting dizzy as all hell right now. Keep it together, brother. Keep it together. Uh, skim milk was solid. He was uh he went all out, and that's what I respected. Guys, like this guy. Yeah, go ahead and stick <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You gotta, you gotta get into it, man. If you don't get into it, you're just How you feeling? It literally says use at your own risk on the fucking bottle. Yep. <laughs> you know, everybody always asks football players about the craziest visiting stadiums to play in and which fans are the wildest and most intimidating, right? But sometimes I think about the other way. Which visiting stadium would you say has the most chill, laid back, and polite fans? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, what? Which NFL fan base has uh, fans that are just kind of chill? They're not as in your face. They're not screaming at you. They're a little bit more polite. Uh, San Diego. San Diego has polite fans. San Diego, real nice people, man. Travis, we are now on wing 10. You've yet to take a sip of water or a sip of milk. You're not a hot sauce guy. You're sweating profusely in the face, so I know you're really going through it. <laughs> I can't breathe. Dude. So, for this last one, it's tradition around here that we dab the last one. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I would say you have come this far. So you just do a little drop, but you gotta be careful because sometimes it'll avalanche. Do me that thing. Oh! I want to go to the hospital after this. Dude, my stomach isn't acting very nice. I'm feeling like a shotgun Pepto Pismo after this. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. All right. Travis Kelsey, 10 wings, no sips of milk, no sips of water, all the way to Blair's Mega Death Sauce. Absolutely incredible. Tap this wing. We'll eat it. And then. Cheers, brother. Cheers. All right. So, my only real professional goal 
is I want a menu item named after me. I want a sandwich. I want the spicy Sean Cuban sandwich on a menu somewhere. Are you a big enough deal where you have a menu item yet? Yes. You do? Yep. What's it called? What is it? Where is it served? I need to know everything about the Travis Kelsey food item. <laughs> the Kelsey Cincinnati Reuben. Even though the Reuben sandwiches are kind of a Cleveland-based deal. It's in Kansas City. It's, it's at McFadden's. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's about all I got for you, man. It uh, comes with some... <laughs> Can't even talk, dude. Comes with chips and a drink? Uh, some garlic fries. Parmesan garlic fries and um, no, Parmesan garlic tots. And how would you describe the taste? <laughs> what? How would the you food describe item, uh, of your sandwich? It was del it's delicious, man. The sauerkraut is not too much, it's not too light. <laughs> Just perfect. So, um just like the Blair's Mega Death Sauce. Just perfect, people. Amazing, yeah. Travis. You made it through with no water, no milk. Let the record show. Absolutely amazing. Travis, the floor is yours. This camera or that camera. Let the people know what you got going on in your life. Uh, uh, right now I'm in pain, guys. It's, uh, it's Travis Kelsey here. Um, feeling real woozy. Uh, it's... Oh, what? Probably your show or something. Oh, the show, show, try <laughs> Catching Kelsey. Uh, premieres on the E at nine o'clock Eastern, um, October 5th, this uh, this upcoming season. <laughs> you you're, you're amused by this. <laughs>